Ooh, welcome to Scrum Mode. Hello. Welcome, welcome, my friends. My name's Julio. Um, I'm joined by my two friends, John and Ryan. Hello. Mm-hmm. We're two friends. <laughs> this is a fact. We're definitely not a bunch of worms <laughs> popping around <laughs> a meat sack. I, yeah, I'm not controlled by worms. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not piloted by a worm. There's no worm in my brain, as far as I'm aware. Sure. Mm-mm. RFK has to worry about that, though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Apparently, he has six. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, funny story about that. A friend okay. of mine, he mentioned that uh, at his job, uh, RFK Jr. showed up. And, okay. Uh, and uh, apparently, he mentioned saying something about having like six brain worms. <laughs> I mean, like, one is bad, because I, I yeah. think they're, they're jokes aside, I believe they're tapeworms that he got from eating various unprotected poor bush meats. Yeah. And they normally and, don't uh, go there. They normally go in your tum-tum. So getting more yeah. than one in your brain is, uh, one in your brain is extremely alarming. Yeah. Six? But six, yeah. Like, he said that, like, oh, like, even if, even the six brain worms can't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like... What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Six brain worms. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a wild amount and that's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big number of worms in your brain. Oh, well, yeah. uh, How big this... are these worms? Do they get? Oh, man. They're like the thin tape they're too big. Coming, you know? They go in your intestine. They're too big. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I uh, mean, they would fit like a whole groove of your brain. I do, you know, I have a... a bunch of worms. I... Like, you know, I... Uh, ah! It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, making him very like, uncomfortable. When, when we were gonna do, when I said to myself, "Hey, there are a lot of D and D worm monsters. Let's just do a worm episode, get them all out of the way." I knew that this was a possibility, but we had to do it anyway. <laughs> and here we are, probably still in the intro. Intro music probably hasn't even cut yet, out yet, and I'm fucking crying and squirming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. I like worms. I like them. Oh. Like ah! I like them. I like them in the dirt, not not in. Uh... Yeah, earthworms don't like to touch them. Important job. Um, bristle worms, cool as fuck. Yeah, cool looking. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. don't touch them. Don't touch them. Uh, don't touch them. Bobbit worms. Don't touch worms. Scary as hell, but be... really cool. Not don't for, touch them. See them from a safe mm-hmm. distance. Don't like. Yeah. Don't touch them. Don't like them. Yeah. Don't anyway, this is the podcast interact that with sits them? at the intersection. Say hi, of monsters. <laughs> um, Yes. Yeah, today we're we're talking about some worms. Yeah, maybe. we're going we're doing another Monster Manual episode, and this is mm-hmm. another like we're just gonna put them all in the same bucket kind of episode. Today yeah, we're talking about worm monsters, and if I were smart, I would have put the carrying crawler in here rather than giving it tackles on episode, but I'm not, <laughs> so here we are. Oh well. Yeah, um, I can't you think of a transition. Worms. Worms. Oh boy. Let, let leave them alone. <laughs> the mulch in the ground is awfully tasty. Mm. Mm. That sounds like your brain work talking. What? No. What? Um, you cannot prove that. Let's start with our first worm here. Our first little wormy guy. Mm-hmm. We'll go through our three D and D worms, and then I will give you our three cryptid worms. Ooh. Mm. All right. So our, our first worm, and by far, I think the most boring worm, more boring than the carrion crawler, is the Grick. And this is just a little wormy guy. I mean, a big wormy guy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, who, you know, they just creep and crawl around dungeons. They're sort of a dungeon cleanup crew. They eat all the dead and decaying stuff, and occasionally they stick to ceilings and attack your party just like the carrion crawler. This guy's just sort of like... Perfect. Was was having a worm monster that can paralyze your party too scary? Too interesting? How about just a worm monster that can bite your party? And that's the Grek. Okay. Um, how big is this worm? How big is this worm? Let me fire up the monster manual. Like, they're... Let's see. It's pretty sick. I think it's medium size. It might be large. So let's, you know, like a 6 foot, 10 foot worm. I see, okay. Yeah, medium sized monstrosity. I see, I see. That's pretty well-sized in terms of monstrosities. Yeah. What's it called again? A Grick. Here, I'll... 
I, I don't blame you for not having any memory of this monster. That's what it looks <clears throat> like. Oh, gross. Yeah. It's like uh, got tendrils. Yeah, it's got little octopus tentacles, and lore-wise, that stays all folded up, kind of like a squid, until they're ready to bite. And then it peels back, and it reveals that horrible, horrible beak. I see. That's cool. So, this guy <laughs> You see is... that part? That's gonna bite you. Yeah. And I was gonna say, like, I have you guys played Darkest Dungeon? I wanted to. I've always wanted to play oh, Darkest Dungeon. Oh, it's one of Dungeon. my favorite games. Yeah. But they have their own version of the Grick, where they've replaced the beak with a... Um, oh. A, what they call a carrion eater, but it looks just like a grick, but they've replaced the beak with a horse's head, and ooh, it's a good design. Ooh. Hmm. Oh, I see. That's cool. Yeah. It's a skull, really, a horse's skull. Horse's skull, yeah. Yeah. That sounds that sounds cooler than a horse's head, I should be clear. Yeah. yeah do not do not let that nibble. Do not you. be tripping. <laughs> yeah. Do not interact with this. Again, once again, do not touch the worm. Do not touch the worm. That's going to be an ongoing theme, I think. Yeah. <laughs> this worm is like a combination of like the things that like you don't like the most. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, luckily none of the D&D worms are going to be parasite worms. We're going to save that for the Mind Flayer mm. episode. Okay. Um, they can climb on walls, just like the carrion crawler. They, can, they have stone camouflage, even though they're bright green, just like the carrion crawler. It's uh, it's a carrion crawler with, um, like like I said, its tentacles don't paralyze. It's a less impre- impressive carrion crawler. I see. Hmm. I don't, I don't have much to say about this guy. Moving on. Moving on. All right, man. All right, man. If you want a big tough worm, you can make. There's a CR7 Alpha Grick. Uh, how do you guys use them? I don't. I'm not inspired to use them outside of the prescribed. Oh, is your party trying to sleep in the dungeon? Don't do that. There be worms there. He can get you. Yeah. If Stick you're in like ceiling, grab a boy. Situation. You know? Do not. Do like not. Grab boy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you have any punch-ups? Do you have any uses? Anything we can do to make the Grick interesting without making it just the carrying crawler? Uh, I don't know. Make it more graboid-like, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you make can it give like, it a burrow. It has a climb a speed, but no burrow. Give it a burrow, yeah. I think it should... It, worms should have a burrow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How about you, Ryan? You got a ge- any genius ideas for us? Uh, hmm. Uh, uh, make it, make it gallop. <laughs> <laughs> make it gallop. Uh, through the through the dirt. <laughs> I, I, the, I don't know. It's a worm. What am I gonna do with a worm? <laughs> I don't know, bud. It squizzles, squirms. One of them has tentacle. F- uh, the can it grab with those? Can it like? Are uh, those like? <laughs> No, no, I mean, like, technically you could. The, the first question on D&D, on D&D Beyond is like, hey, can this guy grapple with those worms, and people, with those arms? And people, players being like, I guess, yeah. It's not rules as written, no, but there's nothing stopping no. you from doing it. I mean, like, it's, they look like they are, they like. They got suction cups, they got barbed yeah, hooks, like They got tentacle stuff going on, you know? Like, yeah. they, they can, the hooks grab in the, I don't. Like, it's got a, a lot of things for its design going for it, but, like, other than, like, the fact that they keep selling it as, like, this is a worm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, like, it's clearly a squid. <laughs> Maybe, now, that's interesting. It's got the it's a little face hugger, yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's got the squid bottom part, you know? Like, yeah. Maybe it should have a juvenile state where it grabs onto you and, like, face hugger style lays eggs in your chest. Oh, God, we just, we're gonna get, I cannot escape the, uh... <laughs> Give it a grab attack, and then like after a few mo- like after like a few turns, like it tries to crack open your chest with its beak. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, or even just an improved grab that it can do while it's biting. Let the tentacles grab and let the bite yeah. bite auto head if you're grabbed. Something I don't know. Yeah, give it a two parter attack. Have it grab you, and if you if you don't escape, it starts to peck you. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Crack you open like a coconut, you son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, better than I thought we'd do with this guy. Let's let's move on to a more interesting one. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, here's this is the big one. This is the purple worm. Do you guys familiar with this one? The purple worm. This is, is your the... graboid. This is your sandworm. This is your mm. oh, your extremely know. big worm. Oh, it's like the... Oh, I see. It's like the Alaskan mm. bullworm. Almost. Yeah, exactly. It, it's the Alaskan bullworm of D&D, and that is a... Um, Gigantic worm. CR-15 those... gargantuan worm that eats everything in its path, yeah. That's a were they called, like, worm. the sandworms in uh, Beetlejuice? What were those called again? They were just called sandworms. They were just called sandworms, right? Yeah. I have, I have to see the new Beetlejuice movie. Yeah. Did I hear it's it? fine, yeah, I but I'll... I'll take fine, man. I'll take fine. At Beetlejuice Beltagees? Yeah. My favorite sequel. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I would, this is a digression. I do gotta say, um, compared to, like, you know, Dan Harmon had this famous rant where he was like, you know, Now You See Me comes out, and they didn't call the sequel, Now You Don't. Yeah. yeah they called it Now You See Me Too, which sucks. And the third yeah. one was just announced, and they're not calling it "Now You Three Me." <laughs> <laughs> now you see me three, and I feel like these these guys are missing every shot. They are. They really are. It's the worst. Uh, nice. it's purple hey, worm. purple worm's a creature in uh, Amazing Let's play. Yeah. Wow, that's like just the same art. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then again, same company. So. Yeah. Undergrad civilizations maintain magical barriers around their settlements to deter these monsters. I was going to get to that, so I'm glad it's the flavor text on that. Um, <laughs> there's some cool Spec Evo stuff with these guys, much like the dune worms or the sand worms. Oh, right? yeah, dune or worm. Or the graboids. Like, these, these are your Beetlejuice worms who shy Halud. Um, indeed, the monster manual says Mind Flayers and Drow and Dwergar, they all have to keep up magical barriers to stop these guys. From running around and just eating everything, eating up villages whole. Um, and unlike our smaller worms, they're big enough that like every time they tunnel, they leave behind a, like a ten foot tunnel, a ten foot wide tunnel that you and your party can stand in. And so like if a bunch of worms have been in the area, it just turns the ground underneath it into like a crisscrossing layer of like catacombs and mazes. That's cool. Yeah, I feel very like you, cool. You could do a scary mission where you're trying to find the worm before it finds you by running around all the places it's been before. Yeah, that'd be fun. I also like the idea that the monster manual points this out that it's like making new cave systems for the underdark as it tunnels and eats everything. That's Ooh. true. Yeah, making fresh caves. That is cool. That's neat. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Have a have a dungeon. Where uh, your party is led to the dungeon because uh, the the people are like, "Hey, there's a new there's a new, new cave. hole in the ground that popped up. Uh, if you go explore it and map it out for us, you know, we'll give you some money for giving us the information." And they go, "Okay," and then you slowly find out why is the dungeon growing. Oh yeah, and then you realize, play, tunnels are starting to interloop with other places you've been, and then you come face to face with a row of teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you have to. I mean, again, I what's don't know. This, what's, uh, what's the challenge rating on these guys? 15, they got to be pretty high level, right? Fifteen. Fifteen. They are, 15. They are big bad. You have to be fifteen to fight this thing. Wow, these are giant monster worms. Yeah, they're tough. Um. Also, because they're, like, constantly eating tons of dirt, apparently a bunch of treasure, like gold veins and gems and rubies and stuff, accumulates in their guts. So if okay. you kill a purple worm, like, yeah, it's a chain the... city. All you the minerals they've eaten. You gotta start excavating their stomach. Yeah. That's neat. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. you get, like, a bunch of gold. That's a pain in the ass. <laughs> like, uh... For, like, defeating them. That's cool. Yep, um... It's At also... that point, you have to, like, hire a group of dwarves to, like, Ooh. go in there and be like, hey, we just killed this thing. Can you excavate its guts for us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, it's of course, big enough to swallow characters whole. It'll bite you. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's also got a poison sting somehow, if you find its butt first. I see. Somehow, it will know you're back there, and it'll try to stab you. Yeah. <laughs> What's the perception on this thing? It's got What's no eyes. What's the perception eyes, so on this thing? That's a good question. Oh, no, wouldn't it be, like, up. sonar? Like, Yeah, it I probably has so. blind sense or whatever it's called in 5th yeah. edition. Like hmm. seismic waves or some shit? <laughs> Yeah, it has a blind sight of 30, a tremor sense of 60, but uh, only a passive perception of 9. I see, okay. Not very, on it's average, very dice, focused. he'll sneak by it. <laughs> I see. It's very focused on digging. He's like, yes. oh, I love dirt. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think once, like, the ore and mineral passes through the other side, they become like a, uh, like a, 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 what do you call it? Like a the, 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 like steel, like you know, it's a it's a processed it's metal like, or something. It's like processed by yeah, the guts. monster manual specifically says all that shit just stays in its gut until it's killed. Oh, but I think okay. you're creating an interesting idea where it's like, hey, you know, there's just gold lying around in worm poop in these tunnels. If you're brave yeah. enough, <laughs> just head on but, down but there. Like, like it becomes like an alloy, you know. Oh, like it all like, gets melted in the gut or something. Yeah, like it gets it gets dissolved by the by the internals, but then like, of course, the ore retains its its uh, its properties, and then it just gets fused in with the gold and like the steel, like the iron and like the other stuff that it may have eaten. And then like, what if one of your quests is like, well, you gotta like don't kill it. We wait till it passes the the soil that it's eaten and then we'll harvest the new alloy that po- that's posi- that's and processed by its something has to go wrong and the worm turns it, on you and oh of course yeah like it's like oh it detects that there's people in its tunnel it's like uh <laughs> and now you have to get out with this rare like super alloy that yeah. you can have made into like a plus two maybe, <laughs> maybe in your world this is the only way that um Adamantium or Mithril like, or, or yeah, what's Mithril. the Final Fantasy one? Um, or a Calcum? It's <laughs> made. It's, it's the worm poops. Yeah. <laughs> it could be one of the ways. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's a neat idea. I think that's a pretty nice little punch up. I think mechanically, he doesn't need a punch up. Story wise, he doesn't really need much punch up. If you want yeah. a big worm, D&D's like, we got a big worm. It does all the yeah. things you'd want Big Worm to do. It's a graboid. It's got a stinger. Yeah. It eat of the dirt. It, it make it a dirt, tunnel. It poop of the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> it make it a tunnel. It expanded mm. the over dark, the under dark. Yeah. That's I also, cool. I also feel like there's a story there where it's like maybe some plumps are like, oh. Hey, our uh, magical MacGuffin that kept the purple worms away broke. Can you get us a replacement from these evil guys before it's too late? <laughs> and then there you go. You have an adventure. You got to sneak into a Twergar city, or the our, your poor little psychic jellyfish friend will get eaten. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Eh, it works. I love my jelly friends. Me too. We established <laughs> they're the they're the only non-evil creature down there. We yeah. have to protect them. Yeah. They are, how dare I say, based. Based. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, for our, our D&D worms, we get the Remoraz. Remoraz. Have you seen these guys? Uh, yes. These guys? I don't think I've seen these guys. He made that one song. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Here you go. It's like a big Jason Moraz. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a centipede. Yeah, it's like a centipede. I guess maybe I was unfair. I write it as like a bristle worm. It's probably more like a centipede. That yeah. thing looks cool. Yeah. Have That's you guys seen dope. these guys before? He doesn't... Mm, mm. This it's guy pretty... has too many legs to be a worm. The other... Okay. I failed you. <laughs> That's, That's the older art where it's got weird like fish eyes. But I, I mean cool. like... It's super cool. No, it's dope. Like the old and the new. But like... It still has way too many legs to be worms. Okay. <laughs> but what about bristle worms? They they don't got legs, but they got a bunch of little they have their legs. I can't I can't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think about nice like, try, John. <laughs> I think about yeah. like I've put a picture of a bristle worm in chat or like a, mm-hmm. I see, yeah. Okay. It's yeah, kinda like fine. a bristle worm. Or like a, a velvet <laughs> worm, which is technically also not a worm. Yeah. <laughs> 
But what Delta the worms are do. fucking nuts. Maybe that's my, maybe that's my punch up for all these monsters. Is like, they, you know, they can Spider Man people. Yeah, they can oh, shoot really? like webs. Yeah, oh, here's a like picture of one doing it. Whoa, look at it. Yeah, look at him go. He's shooting webs right now. He shot web. He shot. Yeah. How do I shot web? That's cool. Whoa, that's crazy. Look at yeah. the look at the thread on that he's, guy. He's got thread. He's got goo shooters akimbo. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, this guy rocks. Yeah, I this guy these. shouldn't be able to do that. That'd be cool. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Velvet Worm. Oh. The rumor has had like a uh, like a uh, <laughs> like a web shooter. <laughs> maybe that's how we maybe we back up. Maybe that's how we fix the Grick is we give him a web ability. Yeah. yeah. Steal the web ability off the work. big spider. Bam! Now it's a ve- now it's a giant velvet now it's a dire velvet worm. You're good. You're rolling. Hell yeah! It's got yeah. the exciting I mean, thing it again. Can do. Put those legs to work, boy. Boy. What those Just legs do? Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap you up. Mm. Worms. I love. Worm. I hate worm, but I love a velvet worm. He's so. He looks yeah. like a. He looks like a Miyazaki character. A little bit, yeah. He looks like he's to there describe? to have a good time. He's a little fuzzy muppet with way too many legs. He's like a little pipe cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a chubby pipe cleaner. Is a pretty good way, I think, of describing yeah. him. I see it. It's it's very real that description. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, as fantastical as they are, um, Remoraz, purple worms are real. Bl- purple worms, velvet worms are real. Mm-hmm. Remorazes are not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So these guys, uh, they are ice worms. Ice worms. They uh, mm. they're mechanically and I think story wise our most interesting worm. They're, um, like, lava hot all the time, and so they use mm-hmm. their hot, hot bodies to melt the ice and just swim through it. And then they, you know, burst out, attack you, burn you up, drag you under the ice and eat you. I see. Mm. Um, they got Burrow, they got uh, Tremor Sense, they also have a swallow hole, like the Purple Worm. But like I said, their unique gimmick, well, not unique, I feel like almost all the fire monsters have this, is like... You fucking punch him, you get hurt. Don't punch him. Don't hit him in melee. I'm sorry, fighters. Your life is so hard. <laughs> There's a lot of monsters that are hard to just fight. <laughs> yeah. It's There's true. a lot of monsters that really punish you for just, like, hitting them. But yeah. Not... That punishes you just for, you know, being alive. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for, like, forcing players to, like, use new tactics, but, like, the wizard just is going to do the same thing the wizard's always going to do. Yeah. The fighter's going to be like, well... I guess I just gotta use my worst bow. Anyway. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. He's got a swallow hole. There's also a baby version like there was with the Grick. Uh, the mm-hmm. baby version doesn't have a swallow hole. He's cool. I don't, I don't think we need any story changes or any mechanical changes for this guy. I don't really have a punch up for him. He a weird, very specific worm. He do what it says on the tin of... Hot, worm too hot, worm live in ice. <laughs> you got any punch ups? You got any bright ideas? I know, give him a web shooter. What, okay, I like that we've just, we're fully purple worm pilled now. Give every yeah. worm a web shooter. Yeah. We no, require worm shooter. Velvet shooter. worm pilled, God. I've said worm too many like, times. Let him shoot like globs of slime that like, uh,. Like uh, make you stick to the floor or the wall or whatever. I mean, maybe maybe this is boring, but maybe this guy the we- instead he's got a flamethrower instead of a web shooter. Like you just steal the fire breath off one of the weaker dragons. Mm. And bam, that really makes his, sense. Uh... Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Does it still fire. come out of his hands? Out of his yeah, it his, come um... out of his mouth. Yeah, his legs. <laughs> I'm, it's not helpful on podcast because you can't see the video, but I'm mimicking the Velvet Worm's cute little like mouth pistols. <laughs> oh, they're mouth pistols. Yeah. Okay. You know, you, you you know, it took me a while. I thought they were tiny, you tiny to, arms. You have to watch the video if you can find it because they like deliberately do like a spiral pattern with them. It's oh, so that's crazy. So cool. They go. Pss- <laughs> Um, does the does the like web also spiral? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, does. it like when, spirals. When... It like covers their whatever they're gonna eat. I imagine. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Here's watch. Watch this later. But uh, 
because this will be a bunch of a uh, bunch of dead air if we do it now. But like, <laughs> watch this shit. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, it's nuts. Silly this is a National Ge- I'll put this in the show notes if I remember. This is a National Geographic. This worm uses a silly string of death. Yeah. A silly string of death. Yep. Way, way to undersell how cool it is. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so unique. Also, like, a lot of them live only in Australia, and when the wildfires happened, like, I think some went, got pretty close to going extinct. Oh. Damn. That okay. sucks. It yeah. Suck. No, they're cool. They're cool little creatures cool. that are probably poisonous to the touch. I don't think <laughs> so, actually. I mean, I think they have a poisonous bite, but they're, you know. Yeah, maybe. I, Whoa! Not... <laughs> Did you get there in the video? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm Whoa, he's going there. wild. They just come out of nowhere. Yeah. He's got that thing on him. He got that thing. He got that quick draw. <laughs> Dude. Bro's packing heat. He he's never left home without it. He's a gunslinger. Yeah. For goo, he's a goo slinger. Dude, he just—he's all like, "Ah, call the ambulance, but not for me." Exactly. <laughs> I'm Holy so glad we moly. found a worm we like. <laughs> we we just like we started bad, and we we're like we all love this little fuzzy guy. Yeah, yeah. He's fuzzy, and then he goes. Phew! <laughs> yeah. What was the poor name little of guy that, um, all stuck in it? What was the name of that one Muppet worm? Slimy it was. I don't know. I... What was her name? I forget her name. Slims I can't think McGee. of a Muppet worm. There's a Muppet worm. He's like a little orange worm. Muppet worm. Yeah, this is going to bother me. Muppet worm. Yeah, we're Googling it out loud. Uh, loud. We already Googled. Uh... Oh, yeah. Slimy. It is, her name is Slimy. <laughs> Wait, okay. Now you have I'm to gonna, I'm going to lean into Slimes McGee. You gotta drop the picture now, because I, I have no idea. I've never heard this before. This one. Here, let me show you. I'll Slimy the Worm. I'm sure this is... I, when I'm picturing a Jim Muppet Henson Worm, Wiki? it does look a lot like... Uh... This guy. Mm. That one. Yeah, okay, I do recognize this. No! Oh. <laughs> yeah. The Velvet Worm, if you... The Velvet Worm, if you gave this guy antennas and little legs, he would look almost exactly like that, actually. Even the <laughs> Just give him a gun. close. <laughs> for that like that first one I posted where it's orange and yellow and blue like that's pretty close yeah that's yeah. not bad oh it's Oscar the Grouch's pet worm I see I see yeah slimy is Oscar yeah the wormy yeah slime 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 bow alright slime. you wanna hear some worm stories you wanna hear yeah. some worm tales sure I am, thank I am, god I am, worms don't exist in real life yeah thank god worms are only in D&D <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, worms are a fake creature. <laughs> all right, so we're we're gonna start with a heavy hitter here. All right, have you guys ever heard? And this sounds suspiciously like the Alaskan bullworm, but have you ever heard of the Mongolian death worm? No. Uh, <laughs> really? Mongolian. The death Mongolian death worm? death worm. He used to be at like this. Used to be one of the most popular cryptids in the '90s, and it's since fallen off. Is it like the Alaskan bullworm? That's what I think. I think the it's Alaskan bullworm. It's like a bull- giant worm. I think the SpongeBob writers were like, "We're going to call this the, Ala- the the." It has the same cadence, you know? Am I crazy? There's an IMDb page for a movie. Called I mean, it Mongolian does. It's got that same like. Yeah. Okay, it's so this the is the Alaskan bullworm. Oh wow! Look at this IMDb. It's you can do the same thing. Death worm. Death worm. See? Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, we got it. We nailed this, it. This IMDb page. This, they made a movie about this Is that a sci-fi thing. movie? Maybe, yeah. Julio found a, a 2010... TV movie. TV movie. Oh, it looks bad. It's Uh-oh. really bad. It looks really bad. Uh-oh. It's like a bad, uh, like, uh, Tremors remix. Tremors remake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Why would you remake Tremors? They already have a sequel. Yeah. Uh, anyway, God, <laughs> good God! That looks like I want I... to read the synopsis real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, read the synopsis. Yeah, do for it. Us. Hit us when, with it. When an American oil company sets up an experimental drilling plant out in the vast deserts of Mongolia, they awaken a nest. The deadly creatures begin to breed and spread, devouring everyone in their path. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's could it? be better. That's it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what I expected. God, I don't recognize anybody on this. Um, Me neither. It does it? Yeah, this looks like like ooh, we want to get fresh faces. Yeah. Also, <laughs> they got a lot of people who they think are Mongolian. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm not in a place to guess or judge anybody's. You know, no, of course Background, not. but those names don't read as Mongolian to me. Yeah. I don't speak a lot of Mongolian. My undergrad was focused there, but anyway. Yeah, anyway. The Mongolian death so, worm. <laughs> yeah, so this is the, um, Mon- the... In Mongolian, they're called the Olgoi Horfoi. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, so this is a disappointingly not massive worm. The biggest oh. one is allegedly seven feet long. Oh, yeah, it's kind of big for a worm. It's big for a worm, but is it big for a monster worm? No. <laughs> it's no, not. It's no purple worm. It's smaller. <laughs> it's smaller than a grick. I don't. Yeah. Like we can't really call it. Yeah. It's big for like a worm that actually exists. It's big for a real world worm, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, worm, so yeah. The, the local. I mean, in terms of like our worms, it's pretty large. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this worm is bright red, and it hides half buried in the sand. Um, and apparently it's supposed to look like a, a, a human or a horse intestine. Oh. So Ew, okay. That's why it's called, the, the local name for it translates to intestine worm. Thankfully it's not parasitic, it just looks like an intestine. Okay, and, cool. Uh, All right. depending on who you talk to, if you get close to it, or you touch it, you'll die instantly of poison or electricity. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> poison or electricity. Yeah, sometimes both. It's the ultimate it's electric no- type. Wow. It, yeah, it's absolutely an electric ground type or an electric poison type. It's the ultimate no step, step snake. Yeah. Also, I wanted to find a better synopsis because the ending of that last synopsis on IMDb sucked ass. So abrupt. So, uh, so for this one, it says, uh, An oil drilling operation in the Mongolian desert disturbs a nest of carnivorous giant worms. A treasure hunter searching for a legendary lost tomb faces what? a battle for his life against the monstrous creatures. That's almost yeah. Too there much was going treasure on. hunting. <laughs> there's an oil company. There's treasure hunting. Anyway, yeah. Also, this movie got a three point four out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> or fourteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Take it as you will. Take it as you will. Neither of those are good signs. Okay, so this this yeah. guy was popular, popularized when Soviets took control of Afghanistan. And there's going oh to be, like, expeditions there and legends coming out. Hmm. Um, and Soviet scientist uh, Ivan Efremov, he's got a tail. He's got a spooky tail. Does somebody want to read Ooh. a spooky tail? Sure, I will. Go for it. Go for it, Ryan. Yeah. A whole... Okay. It's weird. It's like a sausage, the driver whispered in my ear. It had no legs, no mouth, no eyes. It was a meter long and looked like a sausage. Head and tail were indistinguishable. There were two fat snake-like creatures curled up in the sand. When our Grisha jumped out of the cab, our operator shouted, Don't shoot! Catch him alive! and ran after him. At that moment, the old Mongolian man beside me grabbed my hand and looked at me with a frightened look and beg. Believe it. There will be a death. Call them back. So I called out Grisha and Misha. Come back. But they kept running to the animal, not knowing if they had heard me. Suddenly, two worms formed a ring, They're which doing immediately the fusion turned dance. dark They're blue. They're the team-up attack. <laughs> At first, Misha fell silently on the sand and became completely motionless. After a while, Grisha fell to the same place. I took my pistol and ran after them, but the two worms were already gone. Unfortunately, our co-workers were already dead due to the toxins. Whoa! They got wormed. They got got wormed. The two worms hooked up and they released a deadly (laughs) neurotoxin. Yeah, that instantly killed these dudes. So that's fishy. Uh, They sawed them. It was like gas. Yeah. Um... You're locked inside a room with two Mongolian death worms. Stop them from touching with your tongue. <laughs> the only way. You must find the key that I've embedded inside your intestine. If you don't <laughs> find it in time, the doors will unlock and the two worms will touch, releasing a deadly neurotoxin. I mean, that's a better plot than that other Mongolian death worm movie from the sound of it. 
Yeah. Hell yeah. What if it was just Saw, but <laughs> but it was just one death room, and it was the Mongolian death worm room? <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd love it. Yeah, It's just an hour long of watching two worms like go through a maze as a guy is just all like, I have to solve a Sudoku puzzle and a crossword puzzle at the same time. I mean, they're running out of ideas for the Saw movies. You just wait. Yeah. Yeah, we have to wait until it boils down to actually that, where it's just all like, I've trapped you in a room with a crossword puzzle book. I need you to finish all five pages that I have not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they're Mondays and Tuesdays. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just not on top of it right now. My brain's not working. If you don't make it in time, the contraption that I attach to your legs will split you in half. <laughs> <laughs> you have 45 minutes before my lunch break's over. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's like, oh shit, what's a seven letter word for longing? <laughs> Wait, is that what Sudoku works? Or is that cross? That's a crossword. It's a crossword. Yeah. <laughs> or even worse, it's Wordle. Oh, Wordle. <laughs> Wordle. Yeah. I like Wordle. I need, I need you to figure out. Wordle thing, I was having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's one of the many different iterations of Wordle. It's like a Costco Codle. <laughs> <laughs> Where they show you a product from Costco and you have to figure out the price of the of the item in six turns. Jeez. Yeah. He's like, oh shit, $19.99. Oh no, uh, it's uh, $7.99. Why don't we match the prices right and <coughs> saw together for one film? Hell yeah. <laughs> They're funny. up to like Saw 10 or something or Saw 11. Uh, oh man, there's so many saws. There's a lot of it's saws. It's crazy. And the, and that spin-off movie Spiral. Is that oh, a yeah. Saw spin-off? Yeah, it's a Saw spin-off. Oh man. Um, the extended Saw universe. Exactly. The Saw universe. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see the ex- yeah the extended Saw universe. <laughs> yeah. Also, anyway. yeah, Spiral is a it's from the book of Saw. Oh, it's from the book of Saw. I didn't know there was a book. Yeah. There's a, oh, wow. I, had no I, I think that's a, a joke. I think that's a way of saying it's in the Saw universe. Yeah, yeah. I it's see. just a... They're just trying to make it fancy. Yeah. Okay, I, so... I, you know, we one, more, one, one last thing about yeah. Saw I just wanted to just oh, yeah, put out me, there. Me. Mm-hmm. It's just that like, I kind of don't like... I kind of don't like what they did with, like, the, the movie... Like, the movie image design that they have for it. Uh... Like, cause Saw, Saw 1 through 9, or whatever, like, mm-hmm. they went from whatever image that they had previously, and then they just turned it into, uh, it's like the image, it, it's a logo of, like, a bloody saw, and then in the middle of it, uh, like a bloody buzz saw, and then in the middle of it is the, like, is an iconic piece of the movie that, like, that is kind of made it popular. For example, like the first saw movie is a bloody saw blade. And then the image in the center is the hand saw that they had to use to cut off their leg. Okay. Okay. I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's what they did for every sequel from afterwards on. as well. Like just to kind of unify it in this weird, like, <laughs> Like this is the same design. Yeah, we but came the up new with. poster design is just like a flat counting up to ten. Yeah, yeah. In Saw Eleven, it's a count up to, yeah, a, 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 a like, come on. <laughs> what was yeah. it? Nine twenty-seven, two thousand something. <laughs> yeah, two thousand twenty-four. First saw was good, and then I don't know. They, were, I, I didn't like any of the. Sequels. I only saw the first one, but I liked the first one. I'll defend the first one. Yeah, the first one's the best. I mean, one. the first one's good. The yeah. First one's really good. Very suspenseful. Very intense. But it's yeah. just like after that, it was like it be it leaned into the gore aspect, and it was just like yeah, okay, yeah, well, we yeah. like yeah, we saw what yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, anyway. So Moving on the, to worms. Back to worms. So the um the the most worms? interesting thing about the Mongolian death worm is that um, only one white dude non-Soviet white dude really wrote about it until the Soviet Union fell, and then uh, four Czech dudes 
got rented ATVs, just drove around the Mongolian desert looking for it. Mm -hmm. Huh. A very dude's rock moment. I like, I'm shocked they didn't die. Yeah. (laughs) That's just Um, how it is sometimes. Sometimes you just don't die. (laughs) Um, to make it straight, do you guys know who David Ferrier is? David Ferrier? Yeah. Mm, No. No. He's a journalist. He did the Tickled movie, which is like good, but a hard watch. He's like, he, He's a journalist. He does weird shit. Oh, I Tickled. See. Why does that sound familiar? Uh, I don't know. Are you a big The Dollop fan? Because they were part of it. <laughs> you got me, man. Yeah, you got me. Um, so, David Ferrier went looking for the Mongolian Deathworm in 2009. Mm-hmm. He was, like, in the city. Nobody knew what he was talking about in the capital of Ulaanbaatar. But once he got out into the countryside, people were like, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, mm, 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 mm. Um, people have tried using dune style thumpers like the sand shockwave des- devices to lure Mongolian deathworms to the sur- surface even mm. though I can't stress this enough that is a made up thing from dune there's no evidence that would work <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing from dune yeah do you think they did the walking to not <laughs> Oh. What's the worm called in Dune again? I forgot. The Shai Halud? Yeah, the Shai Halud. Wow. Uh, and, like, uh, okay, I see there's, like, a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of people saying that, like, maybe the Mongolian death worm inspired Dune. I can't find any evidence for that. I don't think that's true. Um, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly in like the appendixes. God damn it! Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's true. I don't think it's true. There's nothing in common other than that they're worms that live in sand. Yeah, I mean, uh, also the the worm from Dune also just reminds me of the giant worm from Star Wars. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is like based the, uh... on older pulpier, you know, worm stories. Yeah. God, what, what was the name of those of those worms? What were the names of those words? They, like like, they had a name leaders? for the space worms, right? I just get a Wikipedia, worms. it'll be there. Wikipedia yeah, worm. Anyway, so the interesting thing about the Mongolian death worm is eventually a Soviet scientist caught uh, a sand boa, which is a local type of snake that digs through the sand there. It's a boa, uh-huh. so it kills by squeezing. It's not venomous. Uh-huh. And it's called an exogorth. It, and people were like, that's it, you found it. That's the, that's the death worm. Oh, uh-huh. and, and you did it. Stu- you identified it. <laughs> in other studies, people have shown native Mongolians in rural settings the sand boa, and they've been like, "That's the death worm." So I think, I think it might just be this cute little snake. Ooh, there. I'll Maybe. drop a picture. Yeah, it's this. called an exogorth. <laughs> exogorth. An exogorth? Yeah. That's, the, that's the Star Wars worm. Yeah. Look at this fat cutie of a snake, though. Oh, let's see. Let's... This is this is the uh, this is the sand boa. So this is the it, it, this is the thing that people thought were really dangerous, maybe or a cryptid. But he's kind of just well. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, he looks yeah. like a he looks like a a snake, just a yeah. little fat snake. Yeah, that's <laughs> just a chubby little guy. No, he looks abs- he looks really huggable. <laughs> I like this this picture of this one because he like he just looks really stressed out. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just a. He's like. Mm, mm. Close up on his face. Yeah. He's like, I don't like it. I don't like what's happening right now. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it seems like there be a goof. People are like this animal really dangerous. You know how people sometimes describe magical towers to animals that don't have them. Yeah, I think that's what happened here, and I think that's why the Mongolian death is not popular anymore. Yeah, that's not a that's not a that's just a that's just a little a little chubby snake guy. Yeah, little, I think he's pretty little, cute as far as he's he's go. adorable. He's a little he's a little bud. All right, uh, I I wish we had Tim here for this next one because we're going to deal with oh. somebody very very clearly making up shit about India. Oh, oh no! <laughs> All right, have you guys ever heard of an Indus worm? In this mm, world, no. no, no. So we are we are in an a bestiary from the fourth century by some Greek dude by the name of uh, Tessius. Mm. <gasps> Tessalus, someone who ain't never been to India. Okay, 
So he says that in the Ganges River, the only animal that lives there, it's too dangerous, they kill everything else, which is not true. Mm -hmm. That river has, like, dolphins and shit in it. It's crazy. There's a lot of life there. Yeah. He says that in that river, the only thing that lives there are giant white worms that are seven cubits long. Huh. But this guy's never been to India, so no. why... why, <laughs> why... <laughs> I think he's, like, making it up. Okay. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't I mean, know. We've done enough beast areas at this point where you're, we're just like, where do you get this from? You're not drawing in earlier sources. You just somebody tell you a story at a bar and you're like, 100% true. <laughs> uh, so these worms uh, also have two giant teeth. Two giant teeth. So maybe it's more like a beak, like the grip? I don't know. One not enough. <laughs> So, um, by day, the worms hide underwater, burying themselves in the mud. But at night, they come out of the river, and they crawl around, and they try to grab cows or camels, and then drag them underwater. Okay. Their teeth are so strong, they can cut through bone or even stone. Mm -hmm. Um, And then later, another writer by the name of Alien says that, like, he makes up this whole last story where he says, what Indians do is they take sheeps and they put them on a hook, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then they attach that hook to a chain, and then, then they attach that chain to a rope, and then uh, they wrap that wool They wrap wool around both the chain and the rope to prevent the worms from biting through that, and then they yeet the dead lamb into the water as bait, and when a worm grabs up to it, they tug of war with it until they pull it up to the surface. Then everybody beats it to death with clubs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then they okay. hang up the worm like laundry to dry, and after 30 days, it makes five points of, of napalm. What? Okay. And uh, this oil is so rare five and special. Five of napalm? Five pints. Five pints of napalm. Yeah, I thought you said points. I oh, was no. like, hmm. Pints. You get a score out of beating this worm. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say napalm. It says incredibly flammable, sticky oil that can't it's be napalm. out by water. It's, it's napalm. napalm. This is worm napalm. Yeah. Yeah. Worm palm. Um, so my steel and like apparently, if you were mean to the king of India, he'd use the worm oil on you. He'd, he'd bring use the city it on down. You. I see. Where's this guy from? Who who said this? This is another Greek guy. This is uh, uh, Tessius an alien. Thank you. Thank you. A e l i a n, not a l i e n. A l not a alien. <laughs> um, oh, hey, I, I would say steal this for your Remoraz. Maybe you can get mm. napalm out of a Remoraz because they so hot. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. It it reveals little use flame this shooters. Guy, this guy. Use, use this thing this guy said about this place he doesn't know about. Tell <laughs> this real place that he got literally everything wrong about. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen sorry this is a tangent have you ever seen a ganges river dolphin no uh, they're like freshwater dolphins right yeah they're nuts looking they have really long beaks and also i think i said the ganges this is the indus this is a different river but there is yeah, you know sure. same stuff uh, they're very rare right they're yeah indigenous. very different rivers i think the ganges is religiously important and the indus is not but like the Indus River Valley is like one of the first places in the world civilization showed up. Lots of stuff lives there. It's not mm-hmm. a magical worm city. It is a very important place, though, I imagine. Yes. Um, and I got I got one last worm to finish off with. I got one little worm, quickie. Okay. Have you guys ever heard... God, this is going to be bad radio. Have you ever heard of a guh? Guh. guh. A guh. A guh. Uh, a guh. guh. Is that G-U? G, it, it is, um... It's, it's the G-H. sound that, uh... Guh. Goofy makes. Guh. Guh? It is, a tr- it's transliterated as G-U-H, and I have to be honest, I do not know enough about the language of the Southern Cachone Native Americans to know okay. I'm saying it correctly. Guh. But guh. that's what this guh. anthropologist, Catherine McClellan, has translator- transliterated as, so that's what I'm sticking with. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is again weirdly like the Remoraz. These are worms that like to burrow through cool glaciers or live in mountains and and trees near glaciers. Mm-hmm. Cool glacier. Yeah. 
I think there are actually worms that live in ice. There's got to be, right? There are. I've heard of them on, like, Animal Planet and shit. Let's just give Ice Worm a quick Google and see if we learn anything today. Look up Ice Worm. It's, it's oh, a... no, you're right. Uh-oh. Ice Uh-oh. Worm. Uh, why, oh, no. <laughs> I just don't like the look of them. There are, yeah, they, indeed, uh... several yeah. species of worms that live in Glacier, first discovered in 1887 in Alaska on the Muir Glacier. Oh, no, they're, they live near me. These worms can also be found in the glaciers in Alaska, Oregon, British Columbia, and Washington. Oh, no. <laughs> they seem well, they're fine. very small. They're very small. Yeah. These organisms are unique in that they can simply move between the tightly packed ice crystals. Yeah. There's 77 species of them. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. Including something called the Yosemite snow worm, which again feels like Mongolian death worm, feels like Alaska bull worm. You know, <laughs> same case. Real. Say it again. This is a real worm. Yosemite snow worm. The Yosemite snow worm! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fucked up. Sorry. Uh, I know reading Wikipedia articles is bad, bad radio. But <laughs> when ice worms are exposed to temperatures as modest as 41 degrees Fahrenheit, their membrane stu- structures dissociate and fall apart, i.e. melt, causing no. the worm to liquefy. Oh. So they need to be cold all the time. They need to be cold, otherwise they they melt at 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. They melt it just a little over freezing. Jeez. They're like a living ice cube. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. That is kind of cool. Damn, I learned something today. <laughs> Hell yeah, so, dude. We, we stayed away from the parasitic worms. I actually, I change it. These guys only eat glacial algae. They're cool in my book. Yeah. They're worm-pilled. <laughs> worm, well, I'm not. That's a different thing. Don't look up, uh, <laughs> don't look up weight loss a couple hundred years ago. Ugh. No. <laughs> not that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so the guy, the, this is a specific to those southern Tuchone of the uh, St. Elias Mountains in the Yukon. Mm-hmm. So we're way far in the north. We're uh, up there. <laughs> apparently they leave tracks, like, quote-unquote, many porcupines have been foraging. I'm not sure what that looks like. I'm not super familiar with porcupines. But what, yeah, what do they look like? Like, what, how does the tracks look like when they're foraging? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like porcupines, though. I think they make cute sounds. Yeah, yeah. they are. They're, they're rodents, funny yeah. enough. They're like really yeah, that makes sense. Neighbors. Thinking about but they history. got cool spiny backs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard that the... <laughs> excuse me. Oh, good. The And this could be... I could be spreading misinformation here, so uh, fact check me. But I've heard that the North American porcupine and the African porcupine are not particularly closely related. So it seems like those spikes evolved two separate times. Oh. Wow. North American. They just decided, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> somebody was just getting wrecked by lions and cheetahs, and somebody else was just getting wrecked by wolves and bears, and they're like, you know what would solve this? <laughs> Being covered they're in like, spikes. Hmm, what should I spec my four skill points into? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, thorn body? Thorn armor? Thorn armor. <laughs> uh, they both had the same idea. It's just a question of who specced in later. <laughs> yeah, so so none of the none of the people this anthropologist could talk to could describe what exactly a guh looks like, other than like Good. a big dark worm. Yeah. Uh, a, sha- a shaman said, well, a shaman said that he saw two, God, that was a hard sentence. <laughs> um, they were he, he seashells, saw two, seashells. He saw two baby ones, and they were as big as bears. Whoa. He thought there were two bears in the tree, but there were actually two, I guess, giant caterpillar worm things eating Jesus. all the on it. Yeah, that's yeah. scary. I hate that. That would be cool, though. <laughs> uh, no matter how scary that is, that would be dope. <laughs> oh, it gets worse, though, because nearby, later he noticed two even bigger worms on the ground nearby and uh, realized that the little ones he'd seen were, like, just their babies. Ooh, you guys so are bigger than bears. For, you guys are not prepared for how the story ends. Oh, man. Uh, so using quote unquote four magic bullets, which he put in his mouth, he managed to kill them all. What? Wait. <laughs> he put four magic bullets. So he had four magic bullets. <laughs> what? He put them in his mouth and then he killed them with those magic bullets. 
Yeah, so, like, happen. did he just spit it out, like, watermelon seeds? Or, like, did he consume <laughs> them and then his he gained mental prowess? It's implied to be, like, mind bullets. Like, that's telekinesis-style mind bullets. <laughs> oh, so you consume the rounds and you load up your hypothetical, so. like, like, brain the, gun. I, I'm not an expert on this culture. I don't want to make fun. It's just uh-huh. a footnote at the end of this huge thing on this culture. But it sounds like you put the the bullets in your mouth and then it lets you fire the TK beams. Okay. <laughs> you put the bullets, bullets in your these... mouth and then you have to dexterously finagle them into the magazine that unlocks yeah. in the back of your throat, slip them in, and then they load up into your brain chamber, which but lets this, you fire wait, off so, the psych rounds. <laughs> so who, who, what's this guy's name that did this? So this is this is a, a undescribed shaman who the anthropologist Catherine McClellan was talking to. Okay. Or maybe they're like Altoids. He just like popped them in. <laughs> you know the book. It's all on archive.org. You can read them. I did not have time to read the full study of this this interesting culture. Thank you, uh-huh. archive.org. We love yeah, you. I love archive.org. It's so helpful. This Give is me a your footnote books. at the back of the book, but it's so cool that there are giant ice worms that people are killing with like battles. That's yeah. Incredible. That just felt very D and D to me in a in a positive way. Yeah. You know what? The more I think about it, psychic mind bullets that are like achieved by putting like the rounds in your it mouth. It sounds like, like a JoJo the... stand. It's such a it's cool super idea. cool. Like the the more I think about it, it's a super dope concept. It's like you you have like a bag of them. They're like little, you know, they could be little anything cubes, like sugar cubes, like balls. But then you you pop them in. You, uh, you let them kind of mellow around for a bit, and you fire rounds. <laughs> yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Psychic energies are trapped in them, and when they're released on contact with saliva. <laughs> yeah, I, again, it sounds like a JoJo stand. Like, yes. Wow. And you go... Psh, 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 fucking gigantic know bullet-sized how... holes appear in their body. And they're like, oh! So we shoot my <laughs> bullets at them. Yes, like, okay, that okay. was my understanding. I could be wrong and do not read the whole book on the sculpture and their practices. I just read the bit about the worms, which is less than a page. If you took a photo right at the moment where he fires off a brain bullet, you'll see like this amazing purple light show coming from their skull. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, mind bullets. That's my steal here. Uh, my punch up, make worms that melt. Make worms that melt. I like that. That's that's smarter. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, you got one for us, or should we close it out? I think we'll close it out. I don't really have any anything to add. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to get I hey. want to get dinner. Oh man. Oh, thank you, John. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks, who? For... Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, and that puts a well. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> thank oh, you, man. Julio. <laughs> This is a fun one. Happy Day of the Dead, by the way. This episode is coming out yeah. on Day of the Dead. Oh, dang. I should have done a more Day of the Dead themed it's episode. But, uh, oh, well. It's fine. This one's coming okay. out on Day of the Dead. It's a day after Halloween. Hope you had a good Halloween. Um, we're going to be having some episodes coming out up until uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> then uh, we'll be taking a break. Uh, fair, fair not from Thanksgiving to Christmas into the new year we'll be back on um, I'll, I'll give you guys more in depth uh, next time we record in the next episode in the next episode this is not the but... final episode of the season no right? no no no, no, okay. no we'll have more information for you then we take a break I gotta recharge yeah I yeah. gotta recharge gotta take a break for the holidays we're gonna go dark from Thanksgiving to New Year's but we'll be back next year but we'll have a couple episodes releasing between now and then. Uh, we'll have a Christmas episode, so that'll be fun. But um, yeah. thank you, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank yeah. you, Jesse Sanders, for making our music. Um, yeah. Uh, tell your friends our... about us. <laughs> yeah. Rate our show. One Rate to our five. show. We just Pres- we'd appreciate presumably it. Presumably the top number. Yeah, yes, that's great. Although any writing's good, we you know. Any we'll you know, it also be be honest with yourself. So if it's not exactly a five, we'll take that too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, send uh, us an email. We'll we'll uh, we'll we'll shut you out. We'll uh, give us yeah. uh, some criticism. We'd, we'd appreciate it. Um, yeah. Drop a comment. Drop a comment. That's we'll still active. Yeah. We'll <laughs> shut you out. Um, yeah, Mostly think... just interact with us. We we'll, we love it. We love it. We love when you interact with us. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye-bye.